All right, what's going on, everybody? Daryl Porter here, your Kingdom Wealth Coach, uh, coming to you guys with another powerful video. Um, as you can see on the screen, guys, I want to talk to you about God's original design for wealth. All right, God's original design for wealth. Um, God designed wealth from the very beginning, and he designed it to be a certain way. He designed it to be a certain way. Uh, you know, we, we've gotten off track because we've left God's original design. All right, we've left, and I'm, I'm talking about the body of Christ. We have left God's original design, and I want to talk about that. I want to talk about what his original design was and what it consisted of, and how do we get back to it. So, but before I get into um, the meat of the presentation, I want to talk about uh, the laws of Bible study. This is going to help us understand uh, one of the scriptures that I'm going to use inside of this presentation, the laws of Bible study. All right. And there's 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 a few laws. But I want to I want to concentrate on three of them. All right. And the first one is the law of definitions. See, the study of, of words becomes very important because you have to have the right understanding of words and what they meant back then, not what the, what we have changed them to. We tend to water down words and take the power away from the meaning. See, in the English, in the English, we water down definitions and meanings. See, we well, can go back to the original. Greek and Hebrew understanding of the words that are in scripture, then that gives you the right meaning, the right definition of what that word meant. When you have the right definition and understanding of what that word meant, then you can better understand the scripture and what's being taught inside of the scripture. So the laws of, of definitions become very important, very important, guys. And the next one is the law of context. See, we have to stop taking the word of God out of context. And that happens a whole lot. We take God's word out of context. We are not supposed to read doctrine into the scriptures. We are supposed to take our doctrine from the scriptures. And that's big. That's a lot of that going on these days. All right. There are no isolated doctrine in scripture. You can't, just can't take one scripture and you create a whole doctrine out of it. No, you can't do that. The word of God is like a puzzle. You got to get all the pieces to the puzzle on whatever subject that you you study. I mean, if it's love, then you can't take one scripture on love and think you understand what love is. Now you don't created a whole a whole uh, doctrine on love based off of one scripture. No, we got to go in those scriptures and get all the scriptures dealing with love. All right, and then we base our uh, understanding off of all of those scriptures that put that puzzle together on love, and now we have a complete understanding of what love really is. All right, so you have the law of definitions and you have the law of context. And then the third one, guys, and this is an important one, the law of first mention. All right, the law of first mention. However, something is mentioned in, in the first time in Scripture, that is God's original design for a thing. I'm going to say that again, guys. However, something is mentioned the first time in Scripture, that is God's original design for a thing. That's why I always go back to the book of beginning, in which is Genesis. Uh, if I, if I, feel like that there's something that's being misunderstood or something's not being taught right, I always go back to the book of Genesis because everything was established and started in the book of Genesis. All right, so I wanted to I wanted to kind of hit those three areas, guys, as we go into this presentation because it's going to help you understand the scripture that I'm about to uh, use in this presentation because this scripture has been misunderstood for so long. All right, so you have the law of definitions. You have the law of context. And you have the law of first mention. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. So the scripture that I want to use, again, we're talking about God's original design for wealth. Ephesians 5 and 16. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, I've read this scripture plenty of times. And when I see the word evil, I think about evil. You know, just like evil things, you know. The days are evil. People are doing crazy things. But again, going back to what I said, the laws of, of Bible study, you got to go back and get the original meaning of words. Word, word study becomes very important. All right. Word study becomes very important. Etymology. Very important that you study these words because they don't mean the same when we translate them into English. Sometimes we translate the word and the definition of the word and we can't do that. So let's take a look at this. And the word I wanted to pay attention to is redeem. And the word evil. So the word redeem means to buy up or to buy back. It means to rescue from loss or it means to improve opportunities. 
All right, the word redeem means to buy up or buy back, to rescue from loss, to improve opportunities. That's the word redeem. So the word evil, again, I have my own thought process as to what the word evil means. But when you go back and look at it from its original context, the word evil in this con in this uh, scripture means full of labors, hardships, and bringing toils. So when you have the, the right definition of the words that are important in this scripture, it gives you the right understanding of what the scripture is telling you. So when you look at it from that standpoint, guys, what this is telling you is we have to be able to buy back our time to rescue it from to rescue it from loss and then improve our opportunities. Why? So I don't lose my time again. Because the days are evil. The days are full of labor, hardship, and it's going to bring toil. That's why we have to redeem our time. Man, when I understood that, man, it, the, just like the light bulb went off, that like revelation knowledge just hit me right in the face. Now I understand why time is important. How can I get my time back? Now, of course, you can't get your time back that's already gone. That time is gone. We're talking about redeeming the time that you have left and doing the right thing with it. All right, so let's go a little further into this. So instead of redeeming time, what we've learned to do, we, we do the opposite of that. We sell our time. We sell our time. On these jobs, guys, we sell our time. You're selling time for pay. All right. And if you look up the de definition of a slave, guys, I'm not going to go into it right now, but I want you to look it up what the definition of a, sl a slave is. We sell our time for money. All right. We're doing just the opposite of what that scripture told us um, that we should be doing. All right. So being paid in fiat devalued currency, that is a that is designed to keep you enslaved to a system where there is no way out and you will work for the rest of your life. Now, am I knocking jobs? No. I have a job myself. But the thing is, guys, we got to put our jobs in perspective. We have to put our jobs in perspective. Very important that we learn how to do that. So Albert Einstein says we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. And we can. We can. The, the, the problems that we're having right now Again, we've gotten so far away from God's original design, and we're trying to solve this problem that we've created, that man has created with the same thing that caused the problem. We can't do that. It's virtually impossible for us to do that. So let's go back in time, guys. I want to talk about the parable of the vineyard workers. Okay, let's talk about this parable of the vineyard workers. In Matthew 20 and 1, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers, keyword laborers, into his vineyard. Let's talk about this word labor. A laborer is someone who works for hire. In other words, trades his time for money. Now, go back to what I said in the beginning. We're not, we're following the scripture in Ephesians. We're doing just the opposite. This is what we're doing. We're trading our time for money. That's a laborer, all right? <clears throat> and then Matthew 20 and 22 says, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny, Key word here, guys, I'm going to mess you up. When he, when he, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. That word penny. All right, when you think about a penny, what do you think about? Yep, you, you said it right. You think about a little bronze coin that you got in your little piggy bank. All right, probably got a whole bunch of them inside your piggy bank. That was a penny. And again, guys, I told you the study of words is, becomes very important. The word penny is the word denarion or denarius and a denarius guys was a roman silver coin you see how the how the world system has has tried to take control of our mind and our thought process everything starts with your mind and your thought process guys that's what the enemy is after if he can change the way you think about something he can change you and they have changed the way we thought or think about a penny because the penny in my mind and in my mind because this is what i grew up around is a little bronze coin that we put in our piggy banks well according to the scriptures the word penny in the Hebrew was the word denarion or denarius. Again, it was a Roman silver coin. A penny was not supposed to be bronze. It was a silver coin. Denarius means containing 10. It was a one-tenth ounce of silver. I want you to think about that, a one-tenth ounce of silver. I'm going to show you what this coin looked like. And it's going to blow your mind because we have a coin that look, look just like it. So what is a day? Let's talk about what a day is before we get into what the denarion was. A day back in the Bible times uh, was sun up to sundown. It consisted of a 12-hour day. 
all right, 12 hours. So your day, you only work eight hours. Back in those days, they worked 12 hours. And they worked for this little penny. Again, remember now that you have a complete understanding of what a penny really was. They worked for this denarius, which was the one-tenth ounce of silver. Don't that look kind of familiar? You see how small it is? One-tenth is a ten. It looks familiar, don't it? It should, because it looks just like this. A dime is a one-tenth ounce of silver. Well, from 1964 and earlier, it was truly 90% pure silver. So we started right, guys. We started right. The, the, the government started right. Our forefathers started the right way. They went back and they, they tried to follow scripture. They started out right, but somehow we got off track. So a day's worth of human labor, guys, is equal to one-tenth ounce of silver. All right, a day's worth of human labor is equal to one tenth ounce of silver. So, what did one tenth ounce of silver pay for? Well, a one tenth ounce of silver, which is what a Roman soldier was paid after his day of work, he would go and collect his one tenth ounce of silver, and it took care of him and his family and, was, and provided them for food, shelter, clothes, and paid their taxes. This is the same coin that, that Christ used when he told Peter to go down to the water, and the first fish he found opened up his mouth and pull out a piece of silver and go pay his taxes and their taxes. That shows you the power of silver. Man, this thing blew me away, guys. Blew me away, and I hope you're getting this. I really hope you're getting this. Again, it took care of all the living expenses for a man and his family. One-tenth ounce of silver, guys. A day's worth of labor was equal to one-tenth ounce of silver. One-tenth ounce of silver. So a day's worth of human labor equal one-tenth ounce of silver. So with that being said, guys, one ounce of silver is equal to 10 days of hard labor. All right. One ounce of silver is equal to 10 days of hard labor. So if you had a thousand ounces of silver, it would be equal to 10,000 days of hard labor. If you divide that by 12, guys, 10,000 days, that's 41 years of work. And just imagine the, the hours that goes into pulling the silver out of the ground. That's real hard labor. So a thousand ounces of silver represents 41 years of work. And I tell God, I tell people all the time that it's not about the price, guys, of silver. All right, it's not about the price. It's about what it would do for you when a crisis comes. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more uh, later on in this presentation. So 10 ounces of silver is equal to 100 days of hard labor. If you hold 10 ounces of silver right now, that's equal to 100 days of hard labor. And you're gonna need those days coming up real soon, guys. Trust me. If, you, if you're holding the right thing, you're going to need that. It's going to represent 100 days of hard labor. If you got 100 ounces of silver, that's equal to 1,000 days of hard labor. Man, this is amazing. So think about the buffer that this can create for you and your family when this paper Ponzi scheme collapses. Think about the buffer. I just talked about that. Think about what this is going to do for you. We talked about the people in Venezuela. One ounce of silver is feeding the family for 13 days. That's thir that represents 13 days of hard labor that that family don't have to go out and do because they already have what they need to be able to produce for them and not have to go out there and work for it. So just imagine if a family in Venezuela had 10 ounces of silver. It's representing days of hard labor that they don't have to put in for, guys. Now I hope you understand why it's so important that we collect this. So if you think about it, now this is a U.S. debt clock, and we talked about uh, you often hear me talk about this debt clock, about if uh, when the monetary reset happens, um, then this is probably going to be the price of precious metals because precious metals does the accounting for all currency in circulation. It's been like that for years, ever since we started with paper currency. All right, so you're looking at $920 per ounce for silver, and you're looking at $7,631 per ounce for gold. $920 per ounce, guys. If a monetary reset was to happen right now, silver and gold have to be at a certain price, and it's going to jack the prices up. In Venezuela, back in 2012, uh, right during the time their crisis started, a Venezuelan could have got an ounce of silver for 212 bolivars. That's local currency in Venezuela. Right now today, guys, because they're in hyperinflation, they're going through a crisis, right now today, an ounce of silver is costing over 3 million bolivars. I hope you guys are understanding 
And I hope this is I hope this is getting to you and you're understanding what's going on here. So with that being said, guys, you know, we, we have a program uh, here with the Kingdom Wealth Group that we are a part of um, that has allowed us to um, start what we call a dual wealth approach. All right, a dual wealth approach. Now, based off what we just talked about, I think you understand now why it's important for you to start stacking precious metals. Because we don't trust the government, all right, and we don't want to be working for a hard labor. We already work in hard labor, but it's going to get worse. And we don't want to get caught in that category of having to go out there and work that hard like that. All right. So we we have this dual wealth approach. All right. To where we're stacking precious metals. We have two product ranges. All right. We got bullion coins and we have graded numismatic coins. All right. Bullion coins and graded numismatic coins. We have through this program what we call bundle packages, guys. And we have different bundle packages. We have something that suits everybody. All right, we got a go for the gold bundle for those who like gold. We got a history buff bundle for those who like history. All right, we got what we call a, a select few bundle. These are uh, very low mintage coins, guys. All right, all of these have to do with numismatic coins. These are very low mintage coins. Um, the mintage with these coins here are anywhere between two and 3,000 coins. So very low mintage coins when you have the select few bundle. Then we have the around the world bundle. The around the world bundle. Uh, it, it includes uh, numismatic coins that come from around the world, from different mints from around the world. Then we have our All About the Eagles bundle. For those who love American Silver Eagles, uh, this will be a great bundle package for you. So these are the different bundle packages that we have access to through the platform that we at KWG have decided to join forces with. All right. Powerful program, guys. And listen, Robert Kiyosaki said that silver is bigger than real estate. He says silver is bigger than real estate. And that's why we're so big on silver. Because I believe the silver was used more as money than gold was. In fact, um, if you go throughout scripture, the word silver in the Hebrew is the word kisef, and it means money. And then when you find the word money in the Bible, again, this is why word study becomes very important, guys. You got to go back to the beginning. The word money is the same word, kisef, and it means silver. So silver was money. Abraham bought a plot of land for his wife to bury his wife. And the Bible said that he counted out 400 pieces of silver to pay for that land. Abram was rich in cattle, silver, and gold. The first time the word rich was used in the Bible, and it was related to cattle, silver, and gold. Do we still have those three things in the earth? We do. We're not farmers, so you may not have no cattle. But guess what? Everybody can have silver and gold. The gold is mine and the silver is mine, says the Lord. We should have it. And right now, silver is the best thing smoking out there when it comes to an asset, guys. Silver is affordable for everybody. It's amazing, guys. So the great wealth transfer, all right, the great wealth transfer is happening right now. How do you end up on the winning side of the largest wealth transfer in human history? How do you end up on the right side of it? Well, you can start by getting back with the person that shared this presentation with you. All right. What I just shared with you from the very beginning, breaking those words down and breaking that scripture down, we have to start redeeming our time. Why? Because the days ahead are evil. We just talked about it, man. Them, the hard times are coming. Those hard times are coming. And with that being said, guys, again, I didn't want to make this a long presentation. Uh, definitely want to get back with the person that shared this presentation with you. You want to get back to God's original design for wealth. You need to connect with somebody uh, from KWG or somebody who shared this presentation with you. So if you can get yourself connected, guys, and you can get started today on your wealth journey, all right, on your wealth journey of being on the right side of the wealth transfer that is happening right now today, guys. All right, guys, so God bless. Take care. Hope you got something out of that presentation. Uh, definitely get back with the person that shared this with you. Uh, let them know that you understand. You want to get back to God's original design for wealth. What do I got to do to get started? And they will help you out. All right, guys, to my next video, God bless. Take care. And definitely looking forward to seeing you guys over the top.